Hey guys, Jessica here with Home Sweet Farmhouse and in this video, we're talking about going paperless. Say hi. Say hi, Kimberly. So today in this video, we are going paperless. This is so incredibly exciting because I have wanted to do this for years. And right now, because we are all in social isolation mode, I've already started going paperless and there is no looking back. So I wanna bring you along in my journey. I'm gonna show you the five simple steps that I'm using to completely go paperless. And I do wanna let you know right up front that not only do my husband and I both run businesses out of the home, so I'm going paperless in business. I'm also taking all of my personal stuff and going paperless there as well. So whatever your situation, stick with me and find out my five simple steps to go paperless. All right guys, so step one in going paperless is to purge. And I've been doing this step by step by step. I've actually been going like year by year by year with our businesses and I am purging all of the clutter. The things that I really didn't need to keep anyway, I am going ahead and getting rid of that paperwork. I'm recycling what I can recycle, shredding what needs to be shredded, and getting rid and purging all of the unnecessary paper in our house and in our businesses. So that is the very first step in going paperless. The second step is to choose where you're going to upload all of the documents that you do need to keep. Whatever cloud service you choose to use, there are lots of different services out there and I will say for me personally and in my business I'm using Google Drive because I use Google everything almost everything except for like computers and phones I use Mac and iPhones and so I'm using Google Drive. My husband, however, for him and his business, he chooses to use Dropbox. So that is another solution that you can choose for saving all of your files on the cloud. There are other options as well, including Microsoft OneBox if you're a PC user. So that might be the best option for you if you're a PC user. And there's also, in addition to all the ones that I haven't even mentioned because there are so many out there, um, there's also a really awesome program called Evernote. Now there's a free version of Evernote and then there's a paid version of Evernote. And you get quite a bit with the free version. You can actually, if you're not going, I, I don't think I would upload everything there for a business. You could, there are people that do. For me, it just doesn't work well. Um, but if all you're doing is personal paperwork, Evernote can be amazing for you. Uh, the paid version, actually gives you the ability to search within a document. So if you upload a scan of something and it say, maybe it has a picture of a sailboat on it, or maybe it has the word charter in it, you can actually search by the word or search by an image that may be on that page that you have scanned in and attached inside of Evernote. And Evernote can actually pull that up for you when you do a search. Um, but you can use their tag feature and that's even something you can use on the free version. So do check out Evernote. Um, of course, I'm not affiliated with any of these products or any of these cloud-based services. So I'm not making any money on any of these that I may be recommending to you. There are so many out there. Find the one that suits you best and stick with it. Your third step is to start scanning. And you have different options for scanning in your documents. Maybe you have an all-in-one multi-function printer scanner fax and you can scan directly to your computer awesome go for it I choose to use an app in my phone called scannable the scannable app is produced by Evernote but you don't have to use it with Evernote I actually use it and upload into Google Drive or I can scan and send it directly to my computer using airdrop I love it it makes scanning so so incredibly easy. You just use the camera on your phone to grab one page at a time and super easy, super functional. You can change the name of the file before you send it, which is a lifesaver. One thing I do want to mention is to set out a naming process ahead of time and stick with it. For instance, I have a video on my other channel because I'm also a pet parent coach about digitizing your pet's records. And for that, I suggested keeping the same naming convention with everything you scan in, sticking with it, making things easier. So for a pet record, for example, I start with the name of a pet, then the date of the visit, 
and then a very short description as to what happened in that visit. Maybe they got a vaccination, maybe they got a titer test, maybe it was a well visit. And that is the naming convention that I'm using. So pick a naming convention that works for you and stick with it. It will make life so much easier. Your fourth step is to recycle and shred. So if there is anything that has sensitive information on it, definitely shred it. I know for me, shredding takes up so much more space in our recycle bin and we have a ton of recycling because I try to recycle everything possible. So one thing I have found to be really quick and easy is if I have a piece of paper that maybe only has one or two things on it that are sensitive information, I don't necessarily wanna shred it. All I'm doing is taking a Sharpie and marking out the sensitive information on that piece of paper, and then I can go ahead and recycle it. It takes up so much less room in the recycle bin. I'm still protecting our information and getting it in the recycle bin and getting rid of it. That is going to be probably the most satisfying step of this whole process. Your fifth and final step is to create a system for paper coming into your house. Because now that you've done all this work and you've scanned everything in, you want to keep your house as paperless as possible. Now there are some things that you are definitely not going to want to get rid of and these are generally going to be things that are very difficult to replace. If it's something that's going to be super easy to replace, scan it, shred it, get rid of it. If it's going to be difficult to replace or something that you just don't want to go through the hassle of replacing, keep it. Things like social security cards, birth certificates, maybe a marriage license, titles to your vehicles. Definitely don't shred and get rid of those. Those can be a hassle to get copies of. So keep those. We are gonna have a very small amount of paperwork in our home, but that's really all we need to have. And create a system for things coming into your house. For example, like in our business, maybe I have to print something so that I remember to get it done, but as soon as it's done, it's either getting recycled or shredded and getting out of here, that is it. If I have something coming over, maybe emailed to me, maybe an invoice or receipt that's being emailed to me and I need to keep it for tax purposes, instead of printing it, I'm going to download it, name it, following the naming convention that I created back in step three, upload it directly into whatever cloud system you have chosen to use. That way, the paper never comes into your house. All right, guys, that's it for this video. These five simple steps can get you paperless in no time. I hope you follow them. Please let me know in the comments. Are you trying to go paperless? I really applaud you. Take this time now to improve things in your environment. Go paperless. You can do it. Post in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you have any questions, the reasons why you're wanting to go paperless, I would love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel to help me grow. I really appreciate you for being here and for watching this video. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.